Hello there, everyone. Welcome back to Press for Truth TV. Thanks for joining me once again. Uh, today, we're going to be speaking with Christopher Porter, uh, who is the leader of the Canadian Action Party, and uh, he is currently running for uh, the Toronto Danforth riding, uh, going for that coveted seat of the late Jack Layton of the NDP. Uh, so, Christopher, uh, thank you so much for joining us here at Press for Truth TV. Thank you, Dan. I appreciate it, and I always enjoy watching your stuff. Excellent. Well, it's, uh, it's really great to have you on. Um, for some of the viewers here at Press for Truth who might not be uh, all that familiar with uh, the Canadian Action Party, uh, why don't you just start us off by telling us a little bit about who you are and what is the Canadian Action Party? The Canadian Action Party was started in 1997, and it started uh, with an uh, ex-Deputy Prime Minister who could see that uh, Canadian sovereignty was getting diluted and the direction that we were heading was not good for the country. I myself got involved uh, two years ago after watching a small South Pacific nation get taken over for their resources and uh, watched the World Bank moved in, watched the Asian Development Bank moved in and just watched this globalist approach on taking over a nation and was shocked and alarmed when I came back to Canada and saw how far ingrained it's in in this great nation of ours and I, I couldn't sit back and be quiet and I couldn't sit back and do nothing and got involved politically found the Canadian Action Party believe in its cause believe it's the best party for Canadian sovereignty and now leading the party yeah that's fantastic um, and as you mentioned uh, the the Canadian Action Party is largely about um, moving away from from these uh, you know globalization aspects and and bringing things like the Bank of Canada and, and the issuance of, of currency back into the power and the hands and the control of the Canadian people. Um, that's one of the things um, I really like about what you guys are doing is the, uh, the, the idea of monetary reform. Um, so why don't you break down a little bit for us about um, what, what exactly the problems are today with the Bank of Canada and what does the Canadian Action Party seek to change there to make it better? Well, many Canadians don't uh, realize that we still own a bank. We own the Bank of Canada. It's nationalized for us. It was nationalized on August 15, 1938 by a very progressive Prime Minister, William Lyon Mackenzie King, who had the knowledge and the insight that if you don't control your currency, you don't control the decisions in your country. And uh, Bank of Canada was utilized to get us through the Depression, the Second World War, built the Trans-Canada Highway, built our health care system, the St. Lawrence Seaway. And we used it up to 1974 in the Bank of International Settlements and uh, some World Trade Organizations uh, decided to influence the politicians that it was unfair competition for Canada to control its currency uh, because we are one of the few nations that actually have a nationalized bank and uh, convinced the politicians at the time that it would be more in our best interest to follow this globalist uh, money lending system through private banking institutions to the point where our debt from 1974 till now has skyrocketed 3,000 percent and we're paying 170 million dollars of interest each and every day on compound interest for this debt. It's insanity. Uh, since the 70s to now, what have we really done for this country? What great things have we built? Uh, it, like I said, we built the Trans-Canada Highway with the Bank of Canada. And since we've moved away from it, I really can't see what great things we have done to ensure that we leave a legacy behind for future generations. And that's the biggest shame. So Canadians need to understand that uh, we own the Bank of Canada and we can go back to using it. It's the, they're, they're starting to talk about uh, diluting the Bank of Canada Act. They're starting to talk about changing it. This is all related with the IMF and the World Bank and heading to a central bank system that's uh, held uh, outside the international borders. But uh, we still have it and we still need to fight for it. That's, it's, it's very important. Any nation that controls its currency controls its power and its democracy. And we must ensure that remains in the hands of Canadians. Yeah, I couldn't agree with you more. And th there's certainly no doubt that since 1974 uh, we've been on a downward spiral here in Canada. Things haven't been getting better. Um, are you um, familiar at all with the um, case that's going on with Comer that was recently launched against the, uh, the Bank of Canada to restore it to how it was pre-1974? Um, is, is there any, what's the latest uh, developments uh, with that case that you're aware of? 
I actually just uh, had a function with that uh, William Cram uh, attended, and we cut a cake for, uh, celebrating the Bank of Canada, and he gave us an update. It's still in the process. You know, it's the federal court system, so it's a, a long, drawn-out process. But what's exciting is that uh, that organization has taken on the government and has taken on the Bank of Canada governor and said, you know what, you're not doing it in the best interest of Canadians. And that's what it comes down to. It's the decisions being made at the government level and the banking level is not in the best interest of Canadians. It's in the best interest of the global interests to try to circumvent our laws and our sovereignty in order to gain a foothold of this great country. Canada has huge resources. We can be self-sustainable and uh, we're not being self-sustainable. We're sending our resources overseas. We're not manufacturing products here, and now we're not even managing our own uh, money. It's it's shameful, and it's uh, time that it gets uh, rectified, and that's what the Canadian Action Party is all about. Well, speaking of, of uh, some of those developments, um, another thing that is very troubling to Canadians currently is this current push towards a, a European Union-styled um, kind of North American Union. Uh, so what's your views on um, this this current agenda to kind of bring Canada, U.S., and Mexico more closely in line, um, which may lead to this eventual North American Union. What's your thoughts on that? Uh, Canada needs to be a separate nation, and we're going to fight uh, forever for that. And uh, I've, I've traveled the world, and I remember a time when Canadians could travel and, and watch Americans and other countrymen put uh, Canadian flags on their bags because... Uh, it allowed them better access into these countries and people viewed Canada as the world's best friend and any integration with the, the United States is not in our best interest and I was shocked to see how many people at uh, the university I took my 12 year old daughter and we went to the university and started asking students uh, what do you think about uh, sovereignty and shocked at how many people didn't even understand what sovereignty meant. And then we asked, what do you think about uh, integration with the United States? This was last year before the deal was uh, signed, uh, when they were looking for public uh, input on that. And my daughter and I went out and asked them, and people were saying, oh, I think it would be great. You know, the United States has more money. The United States is, has more opportunity for us. And it, it's shocking, you know. And it's... Uh, it's Canada needs to remain separate, and we have to fight any type of union structure. I was very fortunate to be at the Corfu Greece when the European Union first uh, was formed. I was there on a separate matter but saw all the dignitaries meet and start talking about it. I lived in Italy when the euro was introduced and watched uh, and look what's happened. Look what's happened to Greece. Look what happened to um, Italy. These are two countries I was in that uh, we're right at the forefront of the union uh, amalgamation of the world. And now these two countries are uh, devastated and so far in debt that they're at the mercy of uh, global interests. And that's what the integration is about. It's about uh, changing our laws and changing our sovereignty. So we need to stop it. And uh, Canadian Action Party has very clear abrogation policies on free trade agreements. Well, you know, that, that is exactly why um, awareness is still key at this point. Like you said, it's surprising sometimes um, how so many Canadians are just not aware of some of these things that are going on. And uh, you've been very busy lately on your campaign to, to try to bring awareness of these issues to Canadians. And uh, recently you were invited on to uh, TVO with Steve Pakin. Now, I know they, they didn't allow you to take part in the televised uh, debate, I, I guess because technically you uh, don't have a seat um, yet, but they managed to uh, bring you on. And um, so, what are your thoughts on that? How, how did that interview go? Well, awareness programs like yourself are, are helping to make the difference, you know. And what what uh, it's exciting to see is political activism actually getting political as well and getting involved in the system. Uh, I'm a firm believer that uh, we have this mess because we're not participating enough in our political system. Forty percent of the population is not voting. But programs like yourselves and uh, are get making headway, and and to be on TVO by ourselves, having an exclusive inter interview, uh, talking about sovereignty issues, talking about uh, the Bank of Canada, is breakthrough. In the last general election, I was uh, three times on a, a major mainstream talk show host um, program back west, talking about the Bank of Canada. 
because the mainstream is, you know, they're hearing it. Uh, the message is getting louder and louder and people are calling in and asking about it. So, so it's working. Awareness still needs to uh, occur and it will occur and uh, we need to escalate it to action. And to be active, you have to participate in your democracy. Because if you don't participate, uh, you're either speculating and, or spectating. And unfortunately, there's a lot of speculators of Canada waiting to uh, take advantage of this great country. So we need to stop spectating and getting involved. And, and it, I'm excited because I see a surge. Uh, I see a surge of the youth and, and I'm with my own children. And I see Canadians, when they find us, they say, wow, I've been looking for you guys for a long time. I never knew there was a party like yours. So I'm excited. Yeah, it is. It is exciting to see that uh, these things are, are picking up, and and, and people are um, beginning to try to, to try to get more active. Um, just like we saw uh, on the weekend, where I, I actually first uh, had a chance to meet you at the um, rally for the robocall scandal. Um, so I'm curious to get your take on this whole this whole situation with the robocalls and and the current state of our democracy here in Canada because our, our elections uh, appear to have been stolen from the Canadian people. What's your take on that? Well, it, it definitely, you know, it's, it's uh, I partly blame the population that's not participating. And, you know, we have to recognize that uh, this is designed. Robocalls are designed to get people even more apathetic. It's designed to get people to get discouraged with the system and run away from it. And they're going to continue playing these games and to the point where no one votes anymore and we end up with a regime. So, you know, we, we need to get active here. It's important that we march in the streets and it's important that we inform our government that this is unfair. But we have to make sure that we start targeting these people that aren't participating. And uh, today a, a woman came into the office and said, you know, I'm tired of voting, but I, I know it's important to vote and I don't want to waste a vote. And, and she understood our message that it's not a waste of a vote for voting for us because the more numbers that we start showing, the louder the voice will get. And just like uh, awareness with shows like yourselves, you know, everyone starts with one or two viewers and at the end of it you have thousands. And, and, and that's what it has to be with our democracy as well. We can't let them keep uh, diluting our democracy and need to stand up for it. But we need to start working on more hard campaigns to start voting for what we need in this country. We can't st keep worrying about strategic voting, can't get caught up in their game. We have to start voting for what we need in. And uh, I challenge people to look into the Canadian Action Party, challenge you to get in touch with me if you're doubtful of our intentions, and just talk about it. That's what we need. And uh, there's a lot of us gaining ground here, and it's, it's going to change. Indeed. We do have to keep this momentum going. And I, I would encourage people to definitely check out uh, yourself in the Canadian Action Party. Um, for people who are interested in learning more about yourself and the party and, and um, who might want to uh, get involved, um, where can they go? Uh, what's the website? Where can people go to learn more about your party? Uh, about the party, you can look at actionparty.ca, actionparty.ca. And during this campaign and during all our elections, we run a website, votecap.ca, uh, vote, uh, votecap, votecap.ca. And all my contact information is there. I make sure that I take the time to talk with it, uh, people that are interested to learn about it. Uh, my phone number is listed there as well. And drop me a message and I'll get back in touch with you. Participation is the key. If we give up, it's, it's going to be over. So we need to all participate. And I encourage you to come and learn more about us. Awesome. Yeah, fantastic, man. Thanks so much uh, for speaking with us. Uh, today and um, best of luck in, in the rest of your campaign um, and, and this Monday um, I, I, I hope that um, I hope that it works out for you and you manage to get a seat that would be fantastic so best of luck with that thanks for uh, talking to us again and uh, we'll hopefully talk to you again soon thank you Dan always an honor okay take care Cheers.